Sean from Ace Appliance in Toledo, Ohio. Welcome back to another in-home diagnostic video brought to you by Appliancevideo.com. Okay, we're in a GE side-by-side -side refrigerator. The complaint is that the, uh, the flapper here for the dispenser doesn't close all the way. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and, and actuate it. I can feel that it's open right now. And we're going to see if it wants to close. Yeah, and it's just hanging open right now. So, uh, what we'll do now it closed once I, you know, mess with it a little bit. There's probably some corrosion, which normally happens on the solenoid back in here. So we can pop this apart and take a closer look and find out exactly what it is. Okay, so we're going to access our solenoid. To get there, we're just going to remove this touch pad assembly. It just pops off in the bottom. We have our wires. We're going to disconnect. They're all different sizes, so you can't mix them up. So there's no need to label or mark anything. We'll set that aside. To get this out, there are quarter inch, or I'm sorry, Phillips screws right here and here. There's four of them. We're going to take those out. All right, now we can remove this whole housing. It'll just pull straight out. We'll set that aside. And now we can see our solenoid and our flapper up here. So here's our flapper and our solenoid and it's all connected to work together. There's a lot of corrosion on the plunger for the solenoid so if I open it up it's so corroded it doesn't want to slide back up freely to allow the door to close. So uh, we'll get an estimate to replace this solenoid assembly. Okay so we're going to replace our solenoid. There are three uh, Phillips screws one, two, and three that we're going to take out the bottom two and then we'll just loosen the top. Okay, so we switched to a handheld because of the corrosion on the screw because we didn't want to strip it out. So we got it loose, which will loosen our solenoid. So to remove it, I'm going to open up the flapper door when I pull the solenoid out because at the top it goes through the plunger. And now we've removed our bad solenoid with our rusty plunger. All right, so we have our new component. First thing we do when we go to feed this, the little arm that's on the, the for the flapper, we have to feed through the slot here on our plunger. So I'll open it up, do everything in reverse fashion, get that in there, tuck the top part of the solenoid behind the screw that's in there. Uh, there we go. And now I'm going to put the bottom two screws in to, to mount this. Those are in there, then I'm going to use my hand screwdriver to tighten up the top screw so I don't st strip out the threads. So now my solenoid's in there completely. Make sure it's going to function and close, which it wasn't doing last time. So that's good. So now we can go ahead, move forward to reinstalling the rest of the dispenser parts. All right, so we have the rest of our dispenser housing. We're just going to make sure we don't pinch any wires. So we feed them up into the positions that they're supposed to be. And this will slide back in to place there. Then we can put our screws back in. You just want to be careful not to over tighten these because you will crack the, the housing. All right, so that's on there now. Now we're going to take our little touchpad computer, plug our harnesses into it. Like I said before, they're all different sizes, so you can't mix them up. Looks like our light is on. Turn our light off. And I'm just going to remount it, snap it in place just like that. So now I want to make sure that my flapper is going to open and close properly, so I'm going to go ahead and hit it. I can feel that it's open. And it just closed. And just to verify, I'm going to open the freezer door, look down through the chute, and make sure that it looks like it's closed all the way. And it's closed all the way. So, uh, there we are. Thank you for watching another quality in-home diagnostic video brought to you by Appliancevideo.com.